The lunar eclipse is behind and the solar eclipse is April 8th. The two weeks between them can be loaded with energy. So check out my new video analyzing both eclipses, looking backward and forward. It's like a buy me a coffee, but you get a video too. Funastrology.com, right at the top. And thank you for your support. Hump day, hump day, hump day, Wednesday, March 27th. Thomas Miller here on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thanks so much for stopping in here. I thought we would do, let's take one more look at what's going on in the sky today, and then we'll do some Steve Forrest tomorrow. Deal? Okay, so what I wanted to do today is set the sights on the high timeline side of everything. We have looked at the shadow. We've looked at it long enough. We know we're feeling it. A lot of us have been right in the kill zone, if you will, of these things that have been taking place. I'm hearing about it from so many people. But let's look, because for every challenge, there is an opportunity. I did a video on Princess Catherine looking at the shadow side. Again, just look at, we've got to look at both. You know, people today don't want to look at the shadows. And I get that. I get, because right now it's, <laughs> we need the counterbalance. There's a lot of shadowy stuff out there. But uh, somebody responded to that with an astrologer that they had not only followed, but also been able to be mentored by before he passed away. And I'm taking a look at that material, and I'm finding, wow, there's some good stuff there. May the man rest in peace. He had a, unre well, he did some radio shows. So, I mean, I don't know his full history. I'm learning more, and I'll just keep it there until I parse through more, but I'm excited to tell you about him at some point down the road. And a couple of things came from that, and one of them is a little conversation on yods. And we still have this yod in the chart. It will be with us all the way until the next eclipse on April 8th. And his take on it was to focus on the destiny element of the yod. Steve Forrest talks about this too in the Book of Air, I believe is where the yod section is. And there's a two-sided face to these yods. Steve started his section off by saying if there was one element in astrology that could represent the potential for fame, it would be a yod. And what this new guy that I'm looking at said was that it represents best described as determined destiny. And this would be on a soul level. In other words, your soul knows that it has a drumbeat that it is following, and it just follows it. It's, it echoes in your head until you just do it. Now, that's on the positive side. There is a shadow side, but we're going to set the shadow sides aside today here and just stay on positive ground. So let's just say that there is this determined destiny in the sky from this current yod. In the right corner is Jupiter, as it's applying to its conjunction with Uranus. Jupiter and Uranus are in a sextile to basically Venus pulling away from Saturn. That is a big, expansive, and yes, it is going to be large. Somebody put on another video that their whole she was going to resign, but then they called them in and their whole be she had given her notice. And a couple of days before she was to leave, by her notice, they just shut down her whole department. That's Jupiter. So if you've been through one of these things that we've been talking about, so there's the quote-unquote shadow side, but this yod is telling us that there is major, massive, karmic business. Jupiter expanded. This, whatever the shift is that's on the other side of all of this for all of us, is going to be big. Going to be really big. So fasten your seatbelts. And that, I think, is one very positive message of what's going on in this chart right now. We just have to make our way through this super concentrated energy. Now, here's another elaboration on that in the positive column. Remember on Monday when the eclipse occurred that the moon was 10 degrees away from the south node of the moon, moving toward it and now has crossed over it and today in fact enters uh, scorpio at 503 a.m so there's your um, moon sign change it's your one event in the sky today <laughs> moon goes into scorpio for the next two days but that moon crossed over the south node so this is taking this to our subconscious mind a lot of subconscious stuff coming out that is to be changed, and it is in the heart and soul of our being. Yes, Libra, it may very well be somehow in some kind of relationship. A very good friend's dog passed away during all of this energy, had been with her for 11 years. That was a relationship. 
And this whole thing in my own situation has brought new levels of pain and also new levels of awareness of things unhealed. That's the nature of what this cleansing is. Saturn is there. It's deep and it's karmic. Venus is there. It's relational. Jupiter is there. It's big. Uranus is there. It's a surprise. The moon crossed right over the pinnacle point of this with the south node. This is the karma we need to release. This is the subconscious that wants to be pried up and out. It wants to come out. It's destined to come out. Now, one other thing I do want to talk about quickly, and this can dip into the other side of the column here uh, that I wanted to stay away from, but I do want to mention it, and we are going to do Book of the Moon tomorrow, and that is that Mars is applying to Saturn. We talked about this yesterday. Mars moving toward Saturn. It hits it exactly two days after the eclipse on April 10th. In astrology, in the history, in the annals of astrology, those are the two big malefics. So what are we working with here? Well, the last time that these two collided, and this is where I want to say we're staying in the balance, because the last time these two came together, about every two years, was 2022. Personally, for me, that was when I moved to western North Carolina, a place that I just fell in love with from the minute I was there. And it just felt like home. It was incredible. I've got to let this latest move settle out, but I'm just wondering if I can't figure out some way to be on the Jupiter line part of the year and the Venus line part of the year, because that would be, wow, that would be ideal. But the time before that, roll back two years, was 2020. Mars and Saturn conjoined on March 31st at, get this, zero degrees Aquarius. They had both just crossed over Pluto. Jupiter was at that point conjoined with Pluto. And it was about two weeks after the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 pandemic. And this time, the aspect is going to happen in the middle degrees of Pisces. So it brings a whole different complexion than the last two, which have both been in Aquarius. So I bring this up only to say to be respectful of what the aspect is, but also... Here we are back to, again, choosing our path through it. How are we going to make this work for our highest good? You have two very powerful energies in a very spiritual sign. So new beginnings of anything spiritual under Mars, and then the sheer determination, foundation, structure, and longevity of Saturn can be a great combination. And there's the high side. All right, hope that helps. And then we'll have a fun day tomorrow checking in with Steve Forrest. That'll be great. All right, take care, and I'll see you back with an excerpt from the Book of the Moon tomorrow. Tomorrow.